it's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Vroom vroom. Here we are with chapter 13, lesson number 6, Vector Diagrams. Now if you remember back last year we were looking at alternative vector journeys in 2D. What we're going to do now is we're going to magically flip that to 3D. So, let's look at this example. We have V, A, B, C, D is a pyramid. We can see it here. A, B, C, D and V are the vertices. The vector A, B going from A to B is the vector 8i plus 2j plus 2k. Going from A to D is the vector negative 2i plus 10j minus 2k. And going from A to V is the vector i plus 7j plus 7k. And we want to express CV, so the vector going from C to V in component form. Now the way I always think about this is you can only go along, imagine it as roads and you can only go along the roads that you know. So you have to know the vectors in order to use that road. So we know this vector going from A to B. We know that anything that length, that direction, will also be the vector AB. So going from D to C is also the vector from A to B. Uh, this vector here going from A to D, anything that length in that direction will also be the same as AD. So you can see here if you go from B to C, well that is the same. If you go in that direction, that will also be the same as AD. It's the same length, it's the same direction. Uh, this vector here going from A to V, going from the A up to the point on the pyramid, well there's nothing that is in that direction. These points here going from D to V and B to V and so on may be the same length but they are definitely not the same direction. So we can really only use these vectors here. What we want to do is we're wanting to go from C to V so we want to go from this point here away up here. Again imagine this is roads, imagine if you were driving and you are going from C to V. Well we can't go up here because we don't know this vector so we have to find an alternative route. So, one way of doing it is you could go from C to D. So, the solution is you could go from C to D. Once we're down at D, well, like, we can then go from D to A. So, we're wanting to add on D, A. And once we're at A, well, we know this route as well. We know A to V, so we're wanting to go from A to V. What we need to think then is this journey that we are going on, going from C to D to A up to V, well think about those vectors. So from C to D, that is the same as negative AB, so AB is going in that direction, I can get rid of that, going from a negative direction there. Your D to A, so going from D to A, well that's the same as negative AD, because AD is going in this direction, so we're going the negative of that. And then this vector AV, well that's just going to stay as AV. Putting them in component form then, so we've got the negative of AB, but we know AB is the vector 8i plus 2j plus 2k, so in component form we've got the negative, because it's negative AB, and we'd have 8, 2, 2. So just taking the components. From there we are taking away AD and AD has the components negative 2, 10, negative 2 and AV has the components 1, 7 and 7. From there if you work that out well, we would have negative 8 take away negative 2 plus 1. We'd also have negative 2 take away 10 plus 7 and we've got negative 2 take away negative 2 plus 7. If you work that out in component form just be very careful with the negatives and we would have negative 5, negative 5, 7. Or, if we write it in the form of i, j, k, we'd have negative 5 i, take away 5 uh, j, plus 7 k. And that is how you do that example. Woo! Next one. Example 2. So once again, we have a pyramid E, A, B, C, D. And we've got it here, so the vertices are A, B, C, D and E. And we are told the vectors E, A. So going from E to A, we've got the vector negative 7i, take away 13j, take away 11k. We are told A, B, going from A to B, is the vector 6i plus 6j, take away 6k. And we are told the vector A, D, going from A to D, is the vector 8i, take away 4j, plus 4k. 
We are also told that K point K divides BC in the ratio 1 to 3. So with this line here going from B to C, we've got this point here K, and it's dividing that line in the ratio 1 to 3. So we've got one part here and then three parts here. What we want to do is we want to find the vector EK going from E up here all the way down to this point here. To do that, again, is your alternative vector journeys. So what you want to do is you want to look and see which way you could go. So there's no vector just going from E to K, so we can't just go directly there. So we need to think, how do we do it? Looking at the vectors that we have then, we are told this vector here going from A to B. We know that is 6i plus 6j minus 6k. So we can look for anything that is that length in that direction. And you will notice that from D to C is also that length in that direction. So we know then that these vectors are equal. Again, look at what else we are told, where we're told this vector AD. So we know going from A to D is going to be the vector that we are told here, going from A to D. Uh, so look for anything else in that direction. Isla, what do you notice? Yeah, going from B to C, brilliant. So going from B to C is going to be the same as going from A to D, so we also know that vector. And uh, the last vector that we are told, going from E to A, so let's get a different color for that. Going from E down to A, we are told that vector, look for anything else that is that length in that direction. Well, you may notice that from E to B, or from E to C, or from E to D, maybe that length, but it's definitely not in that direction. It's not even a negative of that. So we cannot use these lines here. We cannot use this line from E down to B. We cannot use from E down to D. And we cannot use a line from E to C. So we can only go along these colored lines. So thinking then, how do we go from E to K? So to do that, one way of doing it is, well, if you're starting at E, we could come down to A. So we're going from E to A. From there, once we are at A, well, if we want to get to K, the obvious way to do that would be going from A to B. So you can do that, so you're adding on AB. From there, if we want to get to K, well, you're just going from B to K. Again, that is a vector that we know. Although we are told it's BC, it's part of that vector, so we're going from B to K. If you think about it, though, well, EA, we're told that, AB, we're told that, but we aren't really told BK. You do, you are told, though, that K divides uh, BC into the ratio 1 to 3, which means then you've got one part here and three parts here. Altogether, that's four parts, so every part is going to be a quarter of the length. And because it's just one part here, well, it's going to be a quarter of the length from B to C. So you can then say that BK is going to be a quarter of the vector BC. From there, if you think about the vectors that you know then, well, we know uh, EA, we are told that up here is negative 7i, take away 13j, take away 11k. We are told AB, we know that as well, it's a 6, 6 and the negative 6. And the quarter BC, well, BC is the same as AD, so it's really a quarter of AD. Thinking about that in component form then, we are going from E to A, we are told that is negative 7i, take away 13j, take away 11k. So you've got negative 7, negative 13, negative 11. We are wanting to add on AB, so AB is 6, 6, negative 6. And after that, we're adding on a quarter of AD. So it's a quarter of 8, negative 4, 4. From there, just work out the quarter of this vector. So you're multiplying every term by a quarter, or you're really just dividing everything by four, and you'd end up with these two vectors remaining as they are, and then a quarter of eight would be two, a quarter of negative four is negative one, and a quarter of four would just be one. From there, if you work out negative seven, add six, add two, negative 13, add six, add negative one, and negative 11, add negative six, add one, that'll give us one, negative eight, and negative 16. Or, if you write it in the form of i, j, k, if you're asked to do that, you'd have negative 1i, take away 8j, take away 16k. And that is example 2. Woo! Example 3. R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y represents a cuboid, as you can see here. Woo! Express V, T, so we're wanting to go from V to T in terms of F, G and H. So to do that, what we're really thinking then is we're wanting to go from V 
all the way down to T. So that is really the vector that we are wanting with the dodgiest arrow ever. Uh, but we can't do that because we don't know what that vector is. So we have to think about an alternative way to go. Again, thinking about the vectors that we do know, we know from R, we know RS, we know that length, that direction is F, which means then that anything that length in that direction will also be F. So from T to U will also be F. We know from W to V will also be F. And we know from X to Y will also be F. So anything that length, that direction is vector F. Other vectors that we know, well, we know G here is from S to T, so anything else that length in that direction will also be G. So going from R to U will also be vector G. Going from V to Y will also be vector G, because it's the same length, same direction. Or going from W to X is also vector G. It's the same length, same direction. And the final vector that we know here, we know from S all the way up to W is vector H. So we know that vector, anything that length in that direction. Well, we've got from T to X. So anything that length, that direction is also vector H. So that will be H as well. Going from R to V will also be H. And going from U all the way up to Y, because I got it, will also be H. From there then, what we want to think is we're wanting to go from V to T. To do that, to go along the lines that you know. Here, really, we do know all these outside lines in this cuboid. So, one way of doing it is to go from V to T. Well, we could go from V to R, so going down here. Once we're at R, it could go along to S, so that would be R, S. And then after I arrive at S, I want to go from S to T. So that is one way that you could go from V to R, from R to S, and then from S to T. Thinking about that then, well, VR is the same as this vector from W to S, which is going to be negative H because it's going to be backwards. Okay, I'm going in the opposite direction, so that's a negative H. I'm wanting to add on RS. Well, RS is just going to stay as rs but if you think about it we're calling that vector f but we're not going from s to r which is where vector f goes f um, we're going the opposite way so we'd have negative f so we've got a negative f and then from s to t what we know from s to t is just going to stay as s to t because that's one we were told and we were told that was vector g which is why we would end up with negative h take away f plus g so going from V to T, which is the way we want, we'd be going down here to R, which is negative H. We'd be going from R to S, which is negative F, because it's the opposite direction. And then from S to T, well, that's just vector G. So we're adding on G. So that is how you would do number three. Try some of these questions. They are in the workbooks. There's a couple of the questions there, but really you're finding alternative vector journeys in 3D. Good luck. Enjoy. Bye.